Games 2013. Boom! So it's like this huge Doctor Who 50th anniversary celebration. A wonderful choir, a wonderful orchestra. Ben Foster's the most handsome conductor on the planet. Daleks, Weeping Angels, Cybermen. When they come in, we can hear the screams behind me. And I do have to turn around and just enjoy it. Everybody's extremely excited, and I just think it's going to be a really great show. I mean, who would not want to perform in this? This is one of the iconic concert halls of the world. The rest of the year, we do very lovely concerts that are very straightforward because there are no <laughs> monsters there's no doctor who one of my new year's resolutions was to go and watch more live music so this is kind of a spectacular way to do it i keep meeting people outside and they say oh, i'm learning the violin or i'm learning the trombone and you think great and i hope that coming to a concert like this will inspire them to want to be in orchestras you know? hello welcome to the bbc prom sat in the auditorium there's nothing really like it i looked at some of the kids and they're like it's cool man it's amazing how the, the songs really do stick with you but like doctor who is so about the drama and the music it's such a huge part of the show I've always written very lyrical themes. Um, they always feel like they're from the heart, I think. I'm trying to just grab people and sing big choruses of love. Murray Gold is a genius, and the number of melodies that man has come up with uh, uh, that are utterly haunting, utterly memorable. I've become quite attached to some of the music in this show because you know, I find it very moving, and also I, I look at Karen and Arthur and Jenna and, you know, acting and doing their best, and then all this soaring sort of emotive music and, and swelling up around you. It kind of stirs me, I guess. It's one of the things I'm going to miss the most, definitely. Well, my role is uh, Madame Vastra, who is a Silurian. She's a humanoid reptile. And, um, yeah, she helped her, uh, Jenny and Strax, help back up the Doctor in some of his adventures. Well, I did the very first one of these about five years ago um, as a Sontaran, but I wasn't actually on stage talking to people. I was running around in the crowd scaring people. So this is, this is uh, actually being on stage in front of the big Royal Albert Hall audience will be uh, very exciting. We've been doing uh, all of the prosthetics since the show came back. These events are always fantastic fun. Just to hear the re reaction from the kids as the uh, Cybermen stomp on, and, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. This is new, this is my microphone. Because obviously I'm going to be on stage speaking to the audience. And uh, yes, yeah, so working out where Commander Strax... Oh, God. Looks like he's had a facial piercing. This is rather, this is rather disturbing. Um, we were in um, rehearsing yesterday and sort of listening to the orchestra play and the choir and watching the screens. It's just, it's going to be awesome, huge, five, six thousand people all going crazy. Once I'd seen her face, I wanted to write something bright, optimistic, happy. She's a fresh face, so I wanted to get that feeling across in the music. Impossible Girl was this theme that was introduced to represent Clara's character. It's hesitant and it's spiralling and mysterious in a way, which is how we first met her. There's something so fairy tale about that music and uh, that hopefully that's what, you know, connects the audience. The use of character themes is absolutely essential. It gives the audience a reference musically and identifies characters and I think the audiences catch on to that. It's amazing how the, the songs really do stick with you. And I love Clara's Impossible Girl theme, and it's kind of something for me to keep. I love it.
Wow, what amazing memories you all have. <laughs> even though most of you weren't even born. Uh, my name is Peter Davison. <laughs> This is fun! <laughs> I'm so pleased to be with you today for this special celebration of 50 years of Doctor Who. And I'm especially excited to be introducing this next sequence that looks back to the classic era, my era of Doctor Who. Thank you. So the classic uh, series of Doctor Who ran for 26 years from 1963. Obviously, I'm, I'm quite late on in those 26 years. Not 1963, I'm not that old. <laughs> Actually, I'm almost that old. <laughs> this sequence includes music by Tristram Carey, Martin Slavin, Malcolm Clark, Dudley Simpson, Paddy Kingsland, Peter Howell, and Mark Ayres. <laughs> and it begins with the iconic sound of the TARDIS created by Brian Hodgson with the help of his mother's front door key and a piano string. Please don't try this at home and then made more weird and more wonderful in the now legendary BBC Radiophonic Workshop. To perform this classic Doctor Who medley, the BBC National Orchestra of Wales is joined by two of these composers, Mark Ayres and Peter Howell. Please give them a huge, classic round of applause. We were asked to uh, put together a short suite, eight minutes we've got, to tell the story of classic Doctor Who from 1963 to 1989. <laughs> it's quite a tall order. There's sort of five or six very well-known, I hope, pieces of incidental music from Doctor Who, uh, which we've sort of arranged, and Ben Foster has uh, orchestrated it all up. It was a passion of mine that we did something with Radiophonic for the 50th, because this music meant everything to me as a child. Peter was also my tutor at the film school, so to be able to go up to my old tutor and say, bar 54, it's not quite working. So I had a good time with that. It's several firsts all at once, really. I've never played synth with an orchestra, <laughs> and uh, certainly never imagined doing it at the Albert Hall. And it's really nice for us to be asked to join in. <laughs> it's a great, and, uh... great opportunity, yes. We've had a terrific time doing it, and I hope that the audience feel that we've rightly celebrated their contribution to the show. I watched Doctor Who from uh, its opening episode, and the music from the Radiophonic Workshop is hugely sort of emotional and, and seemed to fit it like a glove. It's sort of slightly science fiction music, which was unusual then. This is classical music. This radiophonic workshop is, is wonderful, important music that people should hear again. Sadly, time is racing and we're fast approaching the end of the 50th anniversary celebration of Doctor Who, but before we say goodbye... Would you like to hear some more? Yeah. They, would. they would like to hear some more. Well, you're in for a treat. To end this very special Doctor Who prom, we're going to take you back back in time to the 23rd of November 1963 when the very first episode of Doctor Who was broadcast on BBC television. It introduced to the world one of the most iconic theme tunes ever written in the history of the universe. Composed by Ron Grainer and arranged by Delia Derbyshire in BBC's legendary radiophonic workshop, it was unlike anything anyone had heard before. We'll end the concert with Murray Gold's latest version of the greatest theme tune of all time. Enjoy.